not talking about you know rainfall like we're used to seeing in the afternoon thunderstorms. I'm talking about really intense rainfall. It's starting to set up along into the north of the center. Um, that's going to move right over Tampa, uh, Lakeland, Orlando. And, and when it rains that hard, we're talking about rain rates two and three times the normal rates that you would see in an ordinary thunderstorm. When it rains that hard on an urban environment, you know, concrete, you basically create an instant flood. And so it is imperative that everybody in the path of the storm, especially the I-4 corridor, not be out of their homes absolutely inside now and and please do not be driving you cannot see flooded roads at night and you could drive your car right into it last question for you i know you got to run in terms of uh south florida west palm beach fort lauderdale miami the keys uh, are they in the clear at this point what should they be watching for with this storm uh, you got to be watching for these these outer squalls. Okay. These outer squalls can come through and, and produce really intense wind gusts. Um, and you, you think, you, I, I'm thinking and hoping the tornado threat here in South Florida has diminished, but it certainly still exists up in Central Florida. And then and then tomorrow too, it's going to be uh, you know quite windy and gusty on the on the on the back side. Uh, not you know certainly not life threatening or anything like that down here in South Florida. But uh, people are going to know uh, there's a hurricane to their north. All right, Jamie Rome, Deputy Director for the National Hurricane Center, with us here on our Operation Stormwatch coverage. Jamie, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we'll talk to him again in about an hour from now. If you have any questions for our meteorologists, uh, coming up in the 8 o'clock hour, we'll check back in with Weather Channel meteorologist Mark Thibodeau, and we'll also talk to, again, Jamie Rome uh, at around 8.50. Send us a text, 97720 is the number. Uh, give us your name, where you're texting from, and whatever it is you want to know about, and we'll try to get some of those questions answered throughout the course of the night. So, again, 977 Two zero is the number. Next time we talk to a meteorologist, I want to focus in a little bit on the storm surge too, and get a sense as to where that could potentially be the worst based on the track of the storm. Yeah, that's something that I'm, I'm curious about myself because we've been saying now for you know ever since we really started our coverage here that the track of the uh, the track of the storm was really going to make a difference as far as storm surge. Those areas to the south of where the storm makes landfall, we're going to see the most storm. Storm surge, and we've already seen that. I think yeah. in in some video I've seen from places like Captiva Island and Charlotte Harbor, but that the storm surge might not be quite as bad to the north, and that would include uh, Greater Tampa Bay at the moment. But again, seems to depend on the track, and I would like to get that. Uh, I think we need to get that clarified. Yeah, I'm just seeing now that all lanes eastbound on State Road 62 and before US 17 are closed due to flooding in Manatee County. Mm -hmm. There is flooding at State Road 684 and Cortez Road at Gulf Drive. Uh, so some flooding on roads in Manatee County happening right now. I've also seen uh, floodwaters starting to come in in uh, in the uh, Port Charlotte, Charlotte area right now too. Yeah, there's there's two different things happening. We got the storm surge along the coast, and then we have these flash flood warnings that are popping up uh, across the state in certain areas too with some of that inland flooding. In terms of power outages, because that's always a major concern, uh, you're really starting to see them pop up now in the Tampa Bay area specifically. So Hillsboro, Pinellas, Pasco, and Hernando, a uh, ton of power outages there. We're up over 420,000 people without power now. That number's only going to uh, grow exponentially in the coming hours, and that's why it's so important. Uh, make sure you got everything charged. If you uh, have power right now, make sure you have that backup uh, source of power. Hopefully you have you know one of those little chargers or something like that. Make sure you have your iHeart Radio app handy because when the power goes out, we'll be able to keep you informed as uh, everything is unfolding. Just search for whatever iHeart Radio station you typically listen to. We are being simulcast on every Florida iHeart Radio station right now. Uh, so that will be the best way to get the most up-to-date information and it's not going to suck out all the power uh, on your device either. Yeah, as long as you leave the screen off yeah. and just and just have us on to listen to us. There's also some really strong wind in downtown St. Pete right now at the air, uh, at 89 miles an hour. And Sarasota, Bradenton Airport, 90 mile an hour gusts. Uh, somebody is texting in. Actually, we've got multiple texts wondering where the eye of the storm is right now. The eye of the storm is, is still sitting just a bit off the coast, I believe, uh, right off of Sarasota. It has not made landfall. It looks like landfall will be 
Sarasota, though, for this storm. Uh, and that's why you're seeing such severe weather in the Tampa Bay area, because it's the northern eye wall that has the most severe uh, rain, wind, and all of that. And that's what's sitting over St. Pete, Tampa, and a little bit north into Pasco County and Hernando County. So that, that's kind of where we are right now. Yeah, and anywhere you are right now, wherever you're listening from, whether you're down in the Keys all the way up into that uh, that area of Hillsborough County and, and, and beyond, you should not be on the roads. No, As of no, now, no. now is not the time to be on the road. You need to park and get into and seek shelter at this point. Wow, First responders have said all, all up, up and down the coast, uh, the time has passed where they yeah. can come to get you if you are hunkering down and you get in trouble. They won't come, they, no. they, they can't. We're yeah. starting to see some floodwaters here. I'm, I'm looking at some different uh, images that are being posted to uh, X and uh, you're starting to see parking lots getting flooded and, and that's gonna continue throughout the course of uh, the night tonight. Again, whether it's storm surge or we've got these flash flood warnings. In fact, there's one in effect right now until 1045 tonight for Tampa, St. Pete and Clearwater. Uh, and really this flash flood warning extends all the way up uh, to Homosassa Springs. Uh, it extends all the way east uh, to Lakeland uh, and down to Bradenton. So it's a pretty significant area um, in the Tampa Bay region that is under a flash flood warning until 1045. And that goes back to something that uh, Jamie was just saying, those incredible uh, rainfall totals mm -hmm. uh, that they're going to be seeing for an extended period of time. Yeah, worse than, you know, just the, the afternoon thunderstorms. And you know how bad that rain can mm -hmm. get. And this is even worse. And I'm looking on the cameras right now in Sanibel Island. And then there's one in Tampa as well where you can, I mean, it's just like sheets of water coming yeah. down right now. Yeah. So uh, tell us, you know, what you're experiencing. Again, you can text us at 97720. Let us know where you are. Um, and, and we're getting, I mean, a ton coming in right now. Uh, somebody's asking, uh, they, they evacuated to Crestview. They're from St. Pete. How is St. Pete? St. Pete's getting hit hard right now. Uh, I mean, that's, wow, look at Jim Cantori and Charlotte Harbor. Uh, I mean, the floodwaters are now rising. Now he's outside. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the wind is... Uh, it's horizontal at this point. Uh, the rain that's falling. Uh, so. uh, how is he standing? That's what I'm. That's what I'm looking. I think he's how, standing on something. Oh, is he's, he, yeah. he's Jim Cantori. He's <laughs> used to doing this. <laughs> well, we are getting on the water. We actually got somebody on our text that asked if uh, it said uh, Ryan and Dana, are you the Jim Cantori of iHeartRadio? Because when I heard you were coming on, yeah. I started to think, oh, <laughs> we're in trouble. Yeah, when yeah. I take over storm coverage, uh, trust me, it's not good. Uh, all right, this is our live Operation Stormwatch coverage on her radio for the state of Florida. We are covering all things hurricane you through the duration of the storm. And then, of course, in the aftermath, we've got a very busy hour lined up. Uh, we've got more meteorologists on the way. We'll check in with our team standing by across the state. And we'll talk to the executive director of the Florida Division of Emergency Management, Kevin Guthrie, at 830. Back with more in just a moment. Hang on. You're listening to continuing Operation Stormwatch coverage of Hurricane Milton. This is iHeartRadio Florida, WFLM, WHNC, WMTX, Staff W.